vitamins and history books, psychology and a different way to look at it all. Cause my perspective is broken. Suffering's a way to earn your key. I better start putting miles on my feet. But I'm so tired of wandering. Yeah, I'm lost. Comfort was a means to an end, but I'm lying in a bed. No, I'm lost, but I'm living. Welcome back to Cornwall. It's been suggested that I might be going through a midlife crisis. Well, I can't really dispute because I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't even know why. I've got a bee in my bonnet. I've bought myself a tiny little tent and I've got it in my head that I'm going to go and do wild camping in a tiny little tent on my own on the moors. I'm not on the moors, I'm on the farm. This is the third time I'll have slept in this tent. So I'm just kind of learning it up and just getting comfortable with what I need to take with me. And then the plan is, in the next few weeks, I guess, when I'm comfortable with the kit that I've got and the weight that I'm carrying, uh, then I'm either going to go to Dartmoor or Bodmin Moor and I'm actually going to go out and do a wild camp on my own. And that terrifies me, if I'm honest. So uh, I'm just getting a few solo camps in and around here, friends, woods, that kind of thing, just so I can get comfortable with being back under canvas again on my own. Don't ask why. Who knows? Anyway, I've got my tiny little stove. I need to say also, I don't own any kit. I did buy the tent, cheap as chips, 55 quid, I think. I'll leave a link to it down below. I'm a tent camper from way back. I've had, oh my goodness, tons of tents, 20, 25 tents over the years. Like I'm a little bit OCD about my tent camping, or at least I used to be. And then I hit 30 and got old and um, didn't enjoy being in a tiny little tent anymore. And that's when it went up to a massive, the manor house tent, as we call it. And then we went over to a caravan and then we obviously went over to camper vans. So I've kind of gone full circle, it feels. But I don't have any of the like backpacking camping gear. I've always been a car camper. So I've always had the big gas bottle and the big gas stove and taken tons of duvets to sleep on and stuff. So getting my kit down that I can carry on my back is a whole new thing to me. And I don't own any of that stuff. So I'm borrowing it mostly from Johnny. If I enjoy this whole wild camping on my own malarkey, then I'm sure I'll really enjoy buying all the gear, but right now I don't want to spend the money on it just in case I hate it. <laughs> and it will be a complete waste of money. I am quite lucky that he's done a load of bushcraft camping over the years, so he's got everything, literally. Uh, so it's quite handy. I just go through his stash and it's like going shopping for free. <laughs> so I'm using um, a meth stove here. I've never ever cooked on one of these before. So this is quite interesting. This has always kind of scared me a little bit, but actually it's really easy. It's good and tiny little stove, really, really lightweight. We're lucky that there's very little wind here today. So I think if it was wind, like really windy, um, obviously you'd need to put a guard round to protect the flame, but I 
think it would just take too long to boil the water but so far so good and because i didn't want to bring the big cooking pots and all of that shenanigans because i want to keep it nice and light i've actually dehydrated my dinner so in here, uh, elastic band to hold it all together, just a little plastic Tupperware tub. Uh, so in here I've got tiny, oops, tiny little wooden spork. Uh, I have a block of, this is coconut cream. You can buy, it looks kind of like a bar of soap really, um, but it's got, it's basically, it's coconut milk just with all the water and moisture removed. So this is just pure coconut meat. And then you can see that, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but there's like a layer of coconut fat. I'll show you in a minute when I unwrap it. In here, I've got a, what is it, pumpkin. Oh, do you remember that pumpkin I had the other week? Oiking up the hill at St. Ives. Uh, so I used that in making this curry. So this is a Thai pumpkin curry. I've got some cashew nuts that I just put in this morning as I was leaving. Uh, but if you dehydrate a meal with lots of fat in, i.e. lots of coconut milk in, then it will very quickly go rancid. So I figured that I'd just make the curry part minus the oil and minus the coconut milk and then I'd include this in the tub when I go camping just to make a nice creamy sauce. No clue if this is going to taste edible, no clue at all but I am going to pinch cashew nut. Wow, is this supposed to be happening? Um, I guess that's okay. Maybe I need to block the wind from coming that way. Ah, oh, that's better. Okay, well, I've got lots to learn here. Now I am only camping on the farm. I'm like 200 meters from home. You can actually see Myrtle through the trees. So if it's a horrible night, I'm just gonna go and climb inside Myrtle. <laughs> but it shouldn't be. The tent is really nice actually. It's a one to two man tent. If anyone knows anything about tents and camping, generally a one man tent is literally one man can lie down in it. End of story. This they call a one to two man tent. So it's, you could get two men lying in there I mean, it's not gonna be a comfortable night, but certainly for one person and a bag, it's brilliant. It's really, really good. You can also sit up in it, which a lot of the smaller tents, people can't sit up in it and I need to be able to sit up. Thank you very much. It's pretty lightweight. I think it's like 2.2 kilos. You can swap the tent pegs out for titanium ones if you so desire. Uh, which will bring the weight down to about 1.8, 1.9 kilo, I think people have said they've got it down to. The first night I slept in it in my friend's woods, Angie's woods, it hoofed it down. It was so, so, such heavy rain, really, really heavy. It was brilliant. I was dry as a bone in there, really, really good. Yeah, I like it. It's a nice little tent. The forecast is good for tonight. There's not supposed to be any rain, so I'm not going to bother putting the guy ropes out. Um, I don't think there's any need to. I will check the weather a little bit later, just before it gets dark. Um, just to double check, but I think we'll be good. This is nice. I've got the sun coming through the trees. I didn't know how much coconut cream to put in this, so I guess I'm going to put the whole lot in. And if you can see that, so this layer here, this is the coconut cream, and then this is the layer of coconut oil. So because this is um, a low carb meal, I want lots of fat in there, so I don't have no problem scoffing on that little lot. If you were dehydrating something like pasta or rice, you might want to cut back on the fat. So I'm just cutting this up a little bit just so that it kind of dissolves in the hot water a little bit quicker. And I own a, like a proper big dehydrator, but you can dehydrate in an oven. If this works well, I'll do a recipe both ways, one for the dehydrator and one using your oven, because I've never actually dehydrated a meal in an oven. So I think it'd be quite interesting to try. <laughs> There's a bug in my coconut. Get out, buddy. I guess I just cover the food and give it a quick stir. I'm going to pop the lid on and then I'm going to wrap that up in my coat to keep it insulated. And then I'm going to leave it for about five or ten minutes. And by then, hopefully it will have rehydrated. It's already cooked, so I don't need to worry about that. I just need the coconut cream. Uh, to kind of be absorbed into it to make a creamy sauce. I don't know. Watch this space. <laughs> right, while that's doing its thing, would you like a little tour of my palace? Thought you'd never ask. So here it is. It is the Grand Canyon Cardova One. Uh, so it's got this zip rainfly. 
It's got two like air venty things. They're a bit rubbish. They don't really stay open at all. Uh, there's another one at the back. These are the two guy ropes that I'm not going to bother tying off probably. And then, and then inside along this side, there's some built in pockets, which is always handy in a tent. I keep a plastic bag in here to put my boots in at night so I don't have to leave them outside. There is room in like here outside the vestibule to put the boots in. I don't want to wake up with slugs in my boots. I did treat myself to this little inflatable pillow by Trekology, cheapest chips, can't remember how much, I'll leave a link to it below. One thing that I do like, it's got an elastic strap on the back so you can pop this around your sleeping mat so it doesn't slip around all over the place. This is Johnny's sleeping bag, this is a three season. This is his thermo rest that I've pinched. It's a three quarter length, which I don't like, but uh, obviously that makes it lighter, but it's an old school one. So I've actually ordered myself a new sleeping mat, which wasn't hugely expensive. That should be coming next week. So I'm quite excited about this. So because this is three quarter length, I've actually brought a yoga mat out as well, just so that my feet end don't get too cold because obviously this is only going to be under my torso. That's it. I've also pinched his backpack. Thank you, Johnny. You're very, very handy. <laughs> So that's it. That's all there is to show you really. And I'm in our copse on the farm. So it's just a little scrap of woodland that my dad planted like 30 odd years ago, which is really lovely. Uh, so the house and everything is over yonder. I don't know if you can see Myrtle through the trees, but she's hiding there. And then this is actually the edge of our property. So that's next door farmer's field. This field here is ours. Right, let's see what state this dehydrated meal is in. Oh, that's starting to look okay. The coconut is definitely breaking down. We get a nice and smooth and creamy looking. It smells lush. I shall just give that a couple more minutes. And in this part here, you just put meths in there. I actually brought this little bottle in case I ran out because obviously I need to also make coffee in the morning. So it's just regular cheap old meths. So that goes in there and you throw a flame on it and that does the thing and this thing I don't know if you saw it before but it packs up really really tiny actually it packs up into that tiny little pouch which is really quite cool and this bit here just lives in Johnny's um, work bag so it's always on him um, and I haven't screwed that on probably when you do screw it on it's completely watertight and it will hold the meths in there which is really cool Smells blinking lovely. Let's have a little taste, see if it's rehydrated. <laughs> it's actually really nice. I'm gonna pop a tad more water in there, I think. Wow. It tastes really good. I didn't actually taste this curry before I dehydrated it because it didn't have any coconut in it and it didn't have any oil in it and it was just literally vegetables and spices. It's really yummy. Wow. And when I cooked it, it was chunks of pumpkin, which obviously we've lost that. It just looks more like mush now. But most importantly, the flavour is really very good. Right, what do I do now? Any ideas? Well, this is a turn up for the bugs. I just got a message that a parcel had been delivered and the only thing that I'm waiting for is my new sleeping pad. So I thought, 
that was worth breaking camp for to go and get it. And here it is. So I guess this video is now going to be turning into a bit of a product review. This is the Outdoorman's Lab sleeping pad. And I met a guy at the Armchair Adventure Festival, one of the motorcyclist guys, and he was sleeping on one and he loved it. He rated it and it looked fantastic. So look how small it packs down to. It's tiny. It's the same size as an Nalgene bottle, apparently, and it weighs 14.5 uh, ounces. So it looks like I'm going to be kipping on this tonight. That is a really exciting. It's enough to make you a little bit light-headed. Uh, I don't know how many breaths that was, but it was certainly enough to make me feel wobbly. Look at that. Wow. Right, I'm going to go and stick this in the tent and give it a little test. Right, I hope you can see there's not much light in here. Uh, there it is, nice and down. So it's about four centimetres wide at its puffiest. And then obviously these cells in between are very, very thin. So it doesn't have a great R value, so it won't keep you really snug in the winter months. But for autumnal camping it should be good and also the trekology pillow fits nicely round it with that elastic strap that I mentioned before uh, so that's really handy that'll stop that slipping everywhere it's quite a narrow sleeping mat and it's very very long way longer than I would need it's a shame they don't make a shorter one actually but yeah I'm excited to try that tonight fingers crossed I get a good night's kip just rigged Johnny's wildlife cam up on this tree and I've got it pointing over at the tent. So I think it records in infrared. So that'll be interesting. I don't see any tracks like around where my tent is. There is quite a lot of activity over here of nighttime. We've got loads of rabbits and there's also quite a lot of badger activity over here too. So there's lots of little holes where things live. Um, especially in this bank, which is right next to where I'm camped. Um, so yeah, it should be quite interesting. Oh yes, yeah, so if you see my blue sitting pad, now I'm further back, I can see this track here. So yeah, hopefully we will pick up some cool stuff. light is fading fast but I've just been sat here just next to the campfire with nothing to do I'm just sat here with my hands and my feet in the dirt and the fire crackling away beside me and this feels magical even when I'm away in the van I'm not this attached to the earth because I'm in a little metal box with rubber wheels <laughs> it feels like this is what's been missing from my life and feel very, very inspired by the outdoors right now. It's very cool. Anyway, I better sign off for tonight because I don't think you're going to be able to see, see much more, to be honest. Um, so I guess I'll catch up with you in the morning. Until then, sleep tight. Good morning.
I am feeling incredibly sleep deprived this morning. That was not a good night. I would, I was definitely awake more than I was asleep. And I think I was awake a lot more than I was asleep. I was cold and I was a little bit uncomfortable, but it was the cold that was the big problem. And it wasn't like I was really, really, really cold. I was just a little bit too cold. So I didn't make the effort to warm up early on, which is exactly what I should have done in retrospect. Uh, I didn't, and that was a mistake. I so should have done that. Anyway, this is the sleeping mat. Let me turn you guys around. <laughs> Let me turn you around so you don't have to look at this. <laughs> All right, so here's the sleeping mat. Uh, and overall, I think I like it. It is comfortable. I think because I was having such a bad night, I did get uncomfortable, but I think if sleep hadn't been a problem, then I would have woken up absolutely fine on this. Uh, it was too cold though, so as I said yesterday, there isn't um, enough insulation in this, and I want to be camping in the winter. So today I need to rig up some layer to go underneath. If I'd have had this yoga mat, which is like just a foam yoga mat, if I'd have had that underneath that last night, I believe I would have had an excellent night's sleep. Now this is way too big and bulky and heavy. I don't want to be carrying this when I'm backpacking. Um, I want something really lightweight, so I'll see what I've got home. I think I can rig something up pretty easy. So I'm going to leave my actual critique until I've tried it with some insulation underneath because, my bad, I knew that it was an insulated mat. Um, and it was really interesting. I could feel the ground sucking my the warmth out of my body, which is exactly what happens if you sleep directly on the ground. The ground zaps your heat. Um, and I could feel that happening, which was so interesting. Right, most importantly, coffee is on. This is my breakfast. I've got a banana and a little pack of almond butter and this very dodgy looking little pouch. That's my coffee bag. So if you ever saw the Camping Coffee Maker reviews I did, uh, this was my second favourite, second to the AeroPress. And it's just a little organic cotton drawstring bag that I've just put some, uh, my measure of ground coffee into. Not instant, this is ground coffee. Um, so I'll just use that like a tea bag, and it works really well. I use that quite regularly. I like it. Um, I picked up the wildlife cam, so that's going to be interesting to have a little look. I didn't hear anything snuffling around the tent. I didn't hear anything in the leaves. I did hear quite a lot during the night, and mostly I think I heard cows and sheep hacking, like as if they were on 80 fags a day, full on hacking their guts up. And it's so loud, it's so, so loud. Apart from that, it was all quite quiet. Oh, that smells so good. Oh, and suddenly the day doesn't look quite so bad. <laughs> Isn't it funny how one little sip of one little drink can make everything all right again? Right, lovelies, as you can see, I am very, very sleepy still. So I think I'm just going to pack up camp. I'm going to wander on home, have a shower, and then I might well crawl back into a real bed. <laughs> I'm away next week with my mum. I'm very excited. It's her birthday and I'm taking her away for the week, which is awesome. And then when I get back, I'm going to try out the camping gear again, make sure I've got it right this time. And if I have, then I'm going to be heading off onto the moors for an overnighter on my own. Anyway, that is a story for another video. <laughs> so if you enjoyed my little midlife crisis, then please wallop the thumbs up for me. And if you want to see any more adventures that me and that little thing get up to, then feel free to subscribe to the channel and ding the bell. And then you'll get notified each time we upload new video. And don't worry, Myrtle will still be getting lots of love. I just have a range of accommodation to choose from for my adventures now. <laughs> so that's it for today, lovelies. Have a brilliant week and I'll catch up with you next Friday. Peace. Just packing up and look who's come to see me. Hey, you. You know cats have their territory, this is not part of her territory. So even though it's on the farm, even though it's really close to home, she gets really spooked over here. Come on, sweetie.
You are spooked, aren't you? Good morning, you sweet girl.